Hello, everybody. I'm Kelly. Today we're going to talk about sound. So, first question: What is sound? Well, sound is a form of energy. Sound comes from objects that vibrate. When something vibrates, it moves back and forth. Sounds can be loud, or sounds can be soft. But there is more to sounds than meets the ear. What makes sound? When an object vibrates, the air around the object vibrates too. These vibrations in the air are called sound waves. Sound waves travel in all directions from a vibrating object. They carry energy away from the object. Sound needs a material to travel through. The air may look like nothing, but it's actually made up of tiny pieces called air particles. These tiny particles vibrate with sound energy. The vibrations travel through the air particles until they reach your ears. So here comes another question: How do we hear sounds? What happens once a sound reaches your ears? Let's take a look inside. Sound waves enter your ears and hit the eardrum. The eardrum is a piece of soft, thin tissue inside the ear. It stretches across the tube inside your ear. Sounds cause the eardrum to vibrate. The eardrum makes tiny bones in the ear move. These bones send the sound to a curled tube. A bit like a snail's shell, inside the ear called the cochlea. The cochlea is full of liquid. As the sound waves travel through this liquid, they make tiny hairs bend. The bending hairs cause nerves to send signals to the brain. Your brain uses these signals to perceive sound. Carrying sound. Sound can move through any state of matter, gas, solid, or even liquid. But as trav, but sound travels faster through solids and liquids than sound does through air. That's because the particles in solids and liquids are closer together than the particles in air. You can probably hear a sound coming from somewhere right now. Do you know that there is no sound in outer space? Can you guess why? There is no air in outer space. There are no particles to vibrate. Without vibrations, there can be no sound. Let's take a look into absorbing sound. Some surfaces make sounds softer by scattering and absorbing them, like these curtains. The curtains scatter and absorb the sound coming from backstage, so the audience can listen to the performance and not the stage hands. Some places need more sound absorption than others. Recording studios, opera houses, and dance clubs are all built with sound control in mind. In this concert hall, the seats are cushioned to absorb sound. Even if the seat is empty, it absorbs as much sound as if someone were there. This way, a performance will sound the same. If There are only a few people or a full house. So, what makes an echo? Some surfaces reflect sound. When sounds reflect back at us, we may hear an echo. For example, 
When you shout, the sound of your voice travels through the air in all directions. You hear the shout when the sound first reaches your ears. Humans can only hear echoes in certain places, like this cave. When the sound hits the walls of the cave, it bounces back to your ears a second time. Animals with better hearing than humans hear echoes all the time. Some animals use echoes to navigate. Some animals use echoes to navigate and hunt. Bats, dolphins, and whales all use echolocation. A bat can see in the dark with sound. Bats make a high-pitched sound and listen to the echoes that are reflected back. Then the bat can measure the distance to a cave wall or even a tasty snack. Dolphins and whales use echolocation to sense objects and other sea creatures. They can even tell how. Using echolocation, bats can even tell how big that bug is. Humans have developed tools that work like echolocation. Sonar is a system that uses sound energy to find objects underwater. The word the word sonar stands for sound navigation and ranging. An electronic device sends out a ping and listens for the echo. Sonar is usually associated with devices that find submarines, but that's not all it can do. Sonar systems are used for many other purposes, such as mapping the ocean floor, spotting schools of fish, and tracking whales. Some burglar alarms use ultrasound to detect movement. Ultrasound is a type of sonar that operates at a frequency above human hearing. Doctors can use an ultrasound machine to take a peek inside your body. Now, let's dig into sound waves. The shape of a sound wave can tell us about the quality of the sound. Sound waves are somewhat like ocean waves. They have high points and low points. The high point of a sound wave is called a crest or peak. The crest represents the area of crowded particles in a sound wave. The low part of the sound wave is called a trough or valley. The trough represents the area in a sound wave where the particles are farthest apart. Sound waves are even more similar to the coils in a toy spring. Watch what happens when this toy spring moves down the stairs. The coils push together and spread apart. The coils of the spring that are bunched together are the crests of the wave. The coils that are spread apart are the troughs. How loud or soft? Can you think of a really loud sound? Loud sounds have lots of energy. Amplitude is the amount of energy in a sound wave. The greater the amplitude, the more energy in the wave, the louder the sound. Some sounds you can barely hear at all, like a pin drop. Ping. Soft sounds have less energy than loud sounds. How high or low? Sounds can be high, and sounds can be low. Have you ever wondered what makes a sound high or low? It has to do with frequency. Frequency is the number of sound waves that pass a point in a given time. The faster an object vibrates, the greater its frequency. Frequency determines pitch how.、Uh, Pitch how high 
or low a sound is. High-pitched sounds have a higher frequency than low-pitched sounds. The growl of a lion is a low-pitched sound. A songbird's call is a high-pitched sound. Frequency is measured in hertz. You can measure frequency on an oscilloscope. An oscilloscope is a tool that can be used to display a waveform. One hertz equals one vibration per second. Most people can hear frequencies between twenty and twenty thousand hertz. But as people age, they lose their ability to hear higher frequencies. A hearing aid can help people hear frequencies that they may have lost. Many kinds of animals can hear sounds with higher or lower frequencies than a human can hear. Elephants can coordinate their movements through low-frequency sounds and vibrations that are communicated through the ground. This way, if they become separated, they can find each other. This whistle makes a high-frequency sound that humans can't hear. Dogs can though. Some animals can hear much softer sounds than people can. A barn owl can hear the footsteps of its prey. This allows the owl to hunt in complete darkness. So, here's our last question: Why study sound? People have been studying sound since ancient times. Today, scientists use their knowledge of sound in many ways. Ultrasound can be used to clean delicate instruments. It can also be used to help heal wounds and injuries. With sound, humans are able to map the floor of some of the deepest parts of the ocean. Scientists have used sonar to discover vast underwater plains, mountain chains, and volcanoes. And these are just a few uses of sound. Maybe you can come up with a brand new use for sound.